Action Comics 690. This book, I, this particular issue stands out in my memory just because of the opening parts of the book. The print date on it was August 1993, and I believe this is part, what part are we in? Part 15 of the reign of Superman. And this one is called Total Eradication. Now, before we get into lies and revelations, let's talk about who made this book. This is written by Roger Stern, illustrated by Jackson Guise and Dennis Roder, Roder, I believe, lettered by Bill Oakley, colored by Glenn Whitmore. And the reason that this book stands out in my mind particularly is in the funeral of a friend, which we will eventually go over. Like I said, I got the collected trade of this, so I wanted to go through it first. Superman's memory, his tomb, is essentially right in the middle of Metropolis with this golden statue. And there's people who actually worshipped Superman. And so to see all these different iterations come back into the world, we get these weird religious zealots. And you can see this gentleman's face is painted like the cyborg one. And he goes, look not upon our Savior's face with fear. For though he bears the marks of his righteous battles against the terrible beast Doomsday, by his deeds you shall know the truth, and his noble and merciful deeds reveal him as the one true Superman. Be not deceived by the smooth, unblemished face of the uh, visored imposter. He may look like our Savior, but I say unto you, he is a fraud. And just remember this as a kid, this being so like blasphemous in the terms of uh, idol worship and whatnot. It's just a trip. And I mean, look at how the numbers are growing. And then we see the other, the cyborg worshipers and the eradicator worshipers are like, your savior is less than man, less even than a machine. You worship a graven image come into unholy life. Yeah, why don't you go worship a golden calf and make a clean job of it? You dare mark our, mock our Lord. To my side, true believers, drive out the devil worshipers. But before anything else can happen, I love how Maggie, basically the, uh, what are they called? Not stars. the Basically the SWAT team of Metropolis. Maggie says, Superman isn't here to tell you this, so I will. Go home and calm down and then do some positive with your beliefs. Because she knew Superman. and She knew what he stood for. And she knew that he would not tolerate what these religious zealots are doing. We thought last issue that Superboy died, or at least very critically wounded. If you haven't checked it out, pause this, go check out the subsequent reviews we've done, or go to your local comic shop and read the books. But Connor is now a slave, or should I say a prisoner, to Cyborg Superman. And the other reveal that I've kind of danced around, but I'll go ahead and reveal it here. I said, who would Mongol possibly bow down to? It is the cyborg Superman, or is he actually bowing down to him? That's what I like is you start to think, what's really going to happen? Because Mongol does act it up. He goes, you would do well to watch your tongue, pup. Oh, yeah, and who are you supposed to be? Beetlebrow, the poster child for jaundice or poster? Wow. Let's read that again. Who are you supposed to be? Beetlebrow, the poster child for jaundice? <laughs> Ah, that's something Superboy would say. And this Superman basically says he could be turned. He has great potential. He could be a great ally. Or, since he's my clone, he could be spare parts. And I love how even though Connor keeps up the uh, teenage angst act, he's thinking, oh man, I really blew it this time. If even half of what he said is true, he's got the whole world in a vice. So he's really that there's more to life than flirting with girls and playing video games that there are some serious ramifications going on that he needs to shape up. And I love how the cyborg Superman just really doesn't care what Mongol has to say. He goes, he goes, the league and their associates could conceivably present a challenge where if they were to learn the truth. But despite their considerable power, they should be easily to deceive. All of them? What of the one called Supergirl? Supergirl? Did you say Supergirl? You must be joking, Mongol. She's in check by a corporate sponsor. She's even less of a threat than the boy. So Mongol knows better. He just says yes. And of course you're able to deal with the boy easily. 
He's like, why did you let him live? You showed no such consideration for the visor and pretender. Why? The boy has possibilities. He has malleability of youth. Data from the government confirmed, uh, indicates that he might actually be a Superman clone. And if this is so, he could prove useful as spare parts, if nothing else. Whew. Now, while all that's happening, we come to find out how the cyborg Superman was able to, what do you call it, uh, frame the Eradicator, making CGI images of him attacking military bases, and how him and Superboy work together to try to stop him. And then also a way that they tricks the League into making them leave Earth, saying that there may be more threats out there. You guys need to go check it out. So one fell swoop. He has a cover story, and the League is gone. Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, has questions about why he's being sent away instead of helping Cyborg Superman, but he does it anyway. And what I like is how, even though Connor knows that there's a threat happening. He goes, everyone I know is in Metropolis. Rex, Roxy, Tana, Supergirl. I've got to get out of this place. Can't let anything stop me. Superman, the first Superman didn't let Doomsday trash his town, and I won't let these creeps rip it down. That cyborg and his alien flunky are going to be sorry they ever decided to use this little video torture. Because why the uh, cyborg Superman was doing this, he uh, let Connor watch using his image to torture him. Now, when the Eradicator was event killed two issues ago, killed, he comes back to the Fortress of Solitude saying, I need the power source to heal. They said the power source is gone. Now, we learned what the power source was at the beginning of these reviews, which was what, uh, Action Comics 680 or something like that? Anyway, we find out that the egg was Superman, and that was powering the Eradicator. And when he touched Superman's body, he imprinted part of Kal-El's memories. We learn who he really was. That he was actually sort of a Kryptonian threat to Superman that had to be put down. And how he eventually kind of brought Superman back to life. It's an interesting read here. I don't want to spoil it all. I want you guys to go read the series. Now, speaking of this big metal robot that we've seen the last couple of issues... The South Atlantic Ocean, just off the coast of the Falcon Islands. I can't believe these readings. I know that this walking tank could track, but its speed it's maintaining is nothing short of phenomenal, especially at such a depth. At this rate, I ought to arrive in a matter of hours. It can't be soon enough as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> what was that? Did the war suit's defense systems kick in again? I wish I could tell what's going on out there. Because while all this is happening, there's a certain someone that is coming to save the day. So guys, now that I'm older, I can appreciate the reign of Superman. When I first read it, I was literally like seven or eight years old. And it just, it didn't, the ramifications and the, the gravitas that these writers brought to this series, it didn't work on me because I was young. I didn't, I didn't have the mental capacity that I do. Now that I'm older and I love how every single writer made sure to work together. I think Dan Jurgens was the one I saw where he said back in the day, there wasn't really internet yet and there wasn't really cell phones. So DC would fly them all together and have super conferences. And that's how they all hashed out the death of Superman funeral for a friend and the reign of Superman together. And that's why to this day, even though characters have been killed, revived, blah, 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 and it's such a trope now, but that's why back in 90, what was it, 92 to 93 or 94, that's why this was so pivotal and why it's still cherished to this one day and why it is still talked about and regarded and revered. Because it was just something epic. Like on the level of when Barry, uh, uh, Barry Allen died in a Crisis on Infinite Earths. So if you guys have enjoyed what you've seen, please first and foremost support your local comic shop or wherever it is that you get your action figures and comics and grab this series. If you've enjoyed this review, I really would appreciate it. Take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Helps the channel more than you could possibly know. And if you don't mind hitting that fancy little eradicator bell next to subscribe, that way I can tell upload content. You guys get notified. Come to the channel, and I love talking with you on hearing your thoughts and feedback. 
down in the comments below or the socials, which I'll make sure to leave links down in the description. So with all that said, hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, everyone.